Well, will South Africa have to go to the International Monetary Fund, begging bowl in hand? There's no question that the country's economic situation is dire. Investment, we are told, is flowing out while corporates are hoarding their cash. With SOEs needing more bailouts and another surge in the unemployment rate, it does look increasingly like South Africa might need help from elsewhere. Uh, let's get into this discussion now. Joining us via our Skype line is Davi Ruert. He is the chief economist at the Efficient Group. He's on our Skype line. And uh, in studio with us is the Public Servants Association of South Africa, its Assistant General Manager, Ruben Maleka. Thanks, gentlemen, to both of you for Thank coming you. into studio. Uh, let's begin with our Skype connection to you, Davi. I mean, it's a dire situation our country is in. Instead of seeing any kind of improvement, just given the number of summits we've had around the economy, we were hit with this shock announcement, 29% unemployment. Yes, I'm afraid the South African economy is in very, very deep trouble, and we can see it in all sort of numbers and all sort of aggregates, all pointing in the wrong direction. The state debt levels are completely out of hand. The state on enterprises have been gutted financially, and I'm afraid this is likely to continue for some time, and that means a further increase in unemployment and poverty and the like. So we are in very, very deep trouble. And you will echo that sentiment, uh, Ruben, if you look at the Public Servants Association and what it's saying about continued threats of job losses and what that might do to the economy. Yeah, definitely, uh, from, as the PSA, we are concerned that uh, uh, the Minister of Public Service Administration, Treasury, they've been out there saying that uh, they'll be cutting down of 30,000 employees from the public service. And that will tell you that that is going to contribute to the current states of 29% of, of unemployed. So we are opposed to that. We had a meeting yesterday with the Minister of uh, DPSA, and we raised our concern to say that we need to have to sit down and look at the public service. Because this narrative of saying the public service is bloated is incorrect. Yeah. We are saying that the public service as a body needs to be shaped. It's either the head is too big and the body is small, or the body is small, the head, you know, that kind of, of adjustment needs to be made. Because we are saying that the public service, if you look at back in, the, in, in terms of states, it tells you that in 1996, the public service wage bill was 40% of the total uh, 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 you know, uh, fiscals. But currently, as we speak, it's 33%. So there's a reduction already, but there's this narrative of saying there's a bloated public service that is chowing in terms of the fiscals. Davi, what's your response to that? Now, that is completely untrue, of course, uh, and I can give you many examples. The civil, I've done the calculations myself. Uh, the average civil servant is significantly better paid than the private sector equivalent. I've done the numbers. It's not only me. The World Bank recently, this is just one example, the World Bank recently uh, indicated that uh, there are nearly 30,000 too many people that are being paid by ESCOM. Uh, and there are many examples uh, how you can see that the, the, there are just too many civil servants. They are not very productive and they're totally overpaid. The reality is, is that we are in very deep trouble and there, we basically have three options. The one option is to increase taxes and increase taxes quite dramatically. And I can tell you the economy is already totally overtaxed. The second option, and this is what we've been doing, is that we, we just keep on borrowing. And I can tell you there's an end to that as well. And we are most likely going to get a down grant in any event. So the borrowing, you will reach an end of borrowing as well sometime or the other. And the third option, and this is the only one really available to us, is to reduce expenses or expenditure. And that means that we need to spend less on people. There are just too many people that are depending dependent on the taxpayer, the taxpayer simply cannot afford that. And if we do get rid of a number of civil servants, I am afraid it is also going to lead to some uh, downs, uh, downswing in economic activity that is basically inevitable. So austerity is the only option really available to us. The alternatives, we've tried all the alternatives, none of them work so far. Sure. So, so basically, Davi, if I understand correctly, you're in agreement that we should be cutting. So you, you're actually disagreeing with, with, with our guests in studio. We should be cutting those jobs. Absolutely. We have to understand something. There's a difference between keeping people busy and actually creating real jobs. Politicians think that if you keep people busy that that is a job. That is not a job, really, not necessarily. Uh, a job only happens if the economy grows. And the economy is not growing and the economy will not grow until and, and uh, unless we make some very, very difficult decisions and actually implement that. And that means things like, for example, restructuring ESCOM. I'm just using this as an example to make sure that we actually get electricity, but also to make sure that ESCOM's financial woes are addressed. And that means we have to get rid of some of the costs. And the most important cost for ESCOM is, of course, the cost on labor. I mean, that will be a 
bitter pill for you to swallow as the PSA if the World Bank is saying the same thing that our economist Davi Ritter said? I, I think what Davi is saying is talking about the efficiency of the public service. And we should not mistake the number of public servants to efficiency. Because as we speak right now, there are more than 195,000 vacancies in the public service. Go to a clinic today. Clinics that used to operate in four hours are now operating uh, up to four o'clock in the afternoon. Why? Because there's no capacity. Go to home affairs. Look at the long queue that is there. It's not about only about inefficiency. I'm not denying the fact of inefficiency. But the fact is that there's not enough capacity in the public service. So they should, nobody should actually be clapping the public sector into the public service. Because if you're talking about the public sector, then include the state and enterprise, ESCOM, DINEL, and the rest. But I'm speaking for the public service. I'm saying where we are operating is the PSA. We definitely need more capacity than, we, uh, than anybody else. The police, as we talk right now, they're out numbers. Go to schools. The grass are high as two meters because why? There are no groundsmen. So the narrative that the public service is bloated, they need to cut on, I think is, 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 should not be, even be there. The fact is that, yes, of course, if there are issues about other state enterprises that are not actually generating income, like ESCOM, uh, like DINEL, and SAA, there needs to be accounting for that uh, factor. Recently, the, the, the president signed in the uh, SMS, uh, the ministerial handbook, that actually increased more capacity for ministers. Those are areas where people should be looking because they are not directly engaging and providing service to the public. Why are we having so many protests in the country? It's because of service delivery. Who must provide service? In the public servants. Uh, Davi, we need to wrap up our conversation. Perhaps just one last comment from you. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, just a last very quick comment. Uh, first of all, is that uh, it's not only, and I, I agree with you, there are many open uh, uh, positions in the civil service, but the, the, the productivity of the civil service is absolutely, absolutely horrible. Look, for example, of education. Education is the biggest expense as the body minister of finance, and the quality of education in South Africa is absolutely horrible. So what we need to do is not necessarily appoint more civil servants. What we need to do is get more productivity from a civil service. Certainly a very interesting uh, angle to our economy uh, topic this week. Thanks very much to both of you, gentlemen. Davi Ruert, joining us via our Skype line there. He is chief economist at the Efficient Group. And, of course, joining us in studio is Ruben Maleka. He is uh, the general – let me get your title right, Ruben. He's the assistant general manager. Thanks very much for that.